Four years later, the next election came up. This time, due to the 12th Amendment, instead of second place president becoming the vice president, the position for president and vice president were held in different elections. Thomas Jefferson did not make Burr his vice president again, though. Thus, Burr ran for governor of New York. However, Hamilton interfered with his plans yet again. A group of Federalists in Massachusetts wanted to form its own Northern Confederacy and withdraw from the United States. There had been rumors of Burr agreeing to help them with their plan if they made him governor of New York. Because of this, Hamilton declared Burr guilty of being a traitor, and Burr lost the election. Burr, furious at Hamilton, challenged Hamilton to a duel. Hamilton accepted. The doctor and the rowers waited some ways behind the duelers and their seconds in order to give them plausible deniability. Hamilton shot first. However, he shot wide of Burr. Burr, on the other hand, aimed to kill. His bullet met its mark. Hamilton, fatally wounded, would die the next day. In a choice of evils, let them take the least. Jefferson is in every view less dangerous than Burr. Burr, on the other hand, remained unscathed. However, Burr fled to avoid arrest on the charge of murder. As dueling had been outlawed in both New Jersey, where the duel had taken place, and New York, where both men had been political leaders. With Burr on the run and no support from the New England states, the Northern Confederacy fell. Almost mocking just how far the Federalists had fell, the election results ended with the Democratic-Republican candidates Thomas Jefferson and George Clinton getting 162 electoral votes, as opposed to Federalist candidates Charles Pickney and Rufus King, who got 14 electoral votes. Thus, Jefferson and Clinton were elected the next president and vice president. If we have an embryo Caesar in the United States, tis Burr.